All right. Well, this afternoon we have been demonstrating flint napping, the basic skills um, with uh, youth that are interested in archaeology. And so I brought along some of our basic tools, some flakes to work with, some lithic material and um, some uh, larger material. Try a little bit of percussion work and uh, a little bit of pressure flaking. Uh, so I'll just kind of show you some of the simple materials that we have, all of it's readily available. Uh, a few of our patrons today have been very interested in starting to learn about flint napping. And the goal is just to have uh, the students kind of just get a feel for what it was like back in the day. Completing points today wasn't really the goal. The goal is just for them to kind of get a feel for it. So if you want to take a zoom down, I'll show you some of the material that we're working with. So, um, so here we have a hammer stone, uh, a nice piece of uh, deer antler or a small moose. Uh, for pressure flaking, we can go uh, traditional with a piece of uh, deer tine. Uh, we also have uh, a copper uh, nail in a, hand, in a handle, which is more of the modern uh, tools. Uh, for grinding, we've just been using just a simple grinding tool or grinding wheel. Uh, for flakes, we have everything from uh, some of the uh, Burlington shirts. This is a piece of novaculite. Uh, and of course, um, kind of a spent piece of stone uh, right here uh, for use. So basically, again, what we're going to do is just kind of walk you through a couple of the steps and uh, they can kind of see how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab this piece here. And, and so you can do this freehand. So basically, just draw off some smaller flakes. There we go. A lot of crumbling there, but you can kind of get the idea. Okay. Another method is to simply put it on your leg. And again, same thing. The goal is just to get these flakes to travel. There we go. Okay, so today we are gonna demonstrate a little bit about percussion napping. This is a really nice piece of Burlington shirt. You can see just right here, we've already taken off a quite a nice large flake kind of nice when you look at it, you can kind of see the ripple or the energy that was released. We're going to turn this over and you'll see that each of these spots, which is a ridge, is an opportunity to draw off another flake. So I'm going to take my abrader and we're just going to grind off some of that super sharp edge and with a little bit of luck, um, I can get another couple of flakes. All right, so we're going to turn it over and we were able to get a somewhat fractured spot, but already here's another flake that was removed right there. We're going to move the next one down and maybe I can get some of this to release. And same thing. And we were able to get some more of that to release. A lot of crumbling here for some reason. Not the prettiest thing to look at. So let's just turn it over the other side. And. Okay, and there you go. That's what we're looking for. Very nice, beautiful flake released. Now, of course, here you can utilize that for a knife or cutting tool just the way that it is, but it also is an opportunity to uh, make a smaller point or reduce point. So nothing has a waste, always everything has a purpose. So let's just go ahead, Sorry. we're gonna turn it over one more time. And again, follow our number one rule. A braid that edge right there. As you can tell, we are all at the mall and we got some future flint nappers working with us here in the corner. 
Yeah, that's always nice to see. And again, some really nice flakes being removed. You'll notice that I'm flipping the piece kind of back and forth, back and forth. What we're looking to make is a zigzag pattern, which then creates more opportunities for reducing the material. see we're starting to get more and more of those opportunities. These smaller caps, really all we're trying to do is just even up this edge. And again, you'll see lots of these little ridges or opportunities to reduce that material. So now you'll notice we're getting flakes that are coming this way, and now they're coming this way. And that's part of the aesthetics when you look at all these artifacts, how the material is reduced, but also how well, or the art, art craftsmanship, craftsmanship that we're looking for to make that look nice.